Hello everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 6, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim. I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting gets hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join that at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel over on Discord. This meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday, uh, in which case we will typically bump it to Tuesday. Uh, in the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar which you can view online and, or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about the upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonista's Discord role, which of course is the same role you need in order to speak as well. So if you wish to participate by uh, reading out your own notes, then you'll need that role too. The, there is a notes document to accompany the meeting, uh, as mentioned. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can skip around and view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, after each meeting, we will uh, post a link for the next, uh, next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Discord. Uh, check the pinned messages there to find the notes doc for the upcoming meeting. You can always uh, fill in your notes ahead of the meeting as well. That uh, notes doc typically goes up uh, just after the meeting, um, so you can fill those in throughout the week uh, if hug reports or status updates come to you sometime before Monday. Uh, the uh, meeting structure, it's held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part is the first of our two round robins, and that is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing and take a moment to recognize awesome folks in our community. The fourth part and the second of our two round robins is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes, talk about what you have been doing since the last week and what you'll be uh, getting into over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth and final part of the meeting is called In the Weeds. This is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These can be things that came out of status updates, uh, or they can be identified as, uh, ahead of time as too long for status updates. Uh, so if you uh, know of anything you want to discuss in the weeds, go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom of that notes doc and uh, put an entry in the weeds section there for that. That way, uh, when the time comes, we'll be able to just pass the uh, the baton, so to speak, and um, go through the items. So that covers how the meeting will go. So with that, we will get into community news. Let me get my first timestamp. Here we go. Uh, so in community news this week, uh, a couple items that caught my eye. We had the uh, Beagle 5 fire, uh, or perhaps Beagle V fire. I don't know uh, how it's supposed to be pronounced. A uh, single board computer is now out. Uh, this device is a single board computer powered by a microchip Polar Fire. Uh, there's a model number here. It's a Pentacore RISC V. Uh, I guess that probably the V is five then for RISC V. Uh, system on a chip uh, FPGA that allows the BeagleBone Black, uh, excuse me, that follows the BeagleBone Black form factor for compatibility with BeagleBone Cape expansion boards. Uh, the Beagle 5 Fire comes with Ubuntu pre-installed uh, to get started out of the box. Some suppliers have them on order. Uh, RS apparently has some now at the time of press uh, that this item was published. So uh, Beagle board fans, if you're interested in that, there's a new device there. And uh, I know lots of the various Beagle board hardwares support um, Blinka, so I imagine that one perhaps will someday uh, too. Uh, next up, we have uh, ARM has acquired a minority stake in Raspberry Pi. 
Uh, Arm Holdings PLC today announced uh, late last week that it had made a strategic investment uh, for a minority stake in the Raspberry Pi Limited. That's the arm of the Raspberry Pi company that's responsible for the new Raspberry Pi 5 and the uh, uh, prior Raspberry Pi products. There are uh, links here if you want to learn more about that out to Tom's Hardware and Hackster.io. Uh, next up, we have uh, Girl Scout Maker Badges. Uh, Stanley uh, Black & Decker has partnered with the Girl Scouts of the U USA to launch Maker Badges. These new badges are providing the next generation with tools to tap into their creativity, discover new interests, and explore future careers in the trades. Uh, there are links here to the uh, kind of official Girl Scouts website as well as to a Twitter post uh, talking about this if you'd like to read more. Uh, two more we have. Uh, next one is the uh, some Python Software Foundation news. Uh, in the PSF, uh, they recently just announced a uh, new member, uh, Mary Norton, is the new uh, inaugural, uh, inaugural Community Communications Manager. Mary, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's Mary or Marie, so my apologies, but I'll say uh, Marie uh, joins the PSF as a longtime contributor in open source, an experienced community organizer, and enthusiastic communicator. There are links here to the uh, Python Software Foundation uh, website discussing that. Uh, and the final item for the uh, uh, news uh, update this week is uh, the project of the week. This one was an electronic guitar with an ultrasonic neck. Uh, an electronic guitar with some novel twists. This one is programmed in CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi Pico. It uses an ultrasonic sensor rather than a neck to detect movements and translate them to notes. And there is a link here to Twitter if you'd like to learn more about that project. Uh, you can read about all of these items and more in the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, uh, which is a community-run newsletter that's emailed every Monday. The complete archives of that newsletter are available on adafruitdaily.com. Uh, this newsletter highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects to that newsletter, you can uh, either head to GitHub and edit the draft for the next week's newsletter, submit a pull request for that, uh, or if you'd like, you can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email to cpnews at adafruit.com. Uh, thanks to Anne, of course, for uh, all the great stuff in the newsletter week to week. So next up, we will talk about the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So this report, uh, let's see here, let me get to the right spot. Um, so yeah, this is the quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, uh, and then we'll separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. So this week in the uh, overall stats, we had, uh, uh, an astounding 74 uh, pull requests merged over the entire project uh, from 17 authors, and there were quite a few names in here that are newer or less uh, frequent contributors or perhaps just uh, less familiar to me personally, but the, the names that uh, stood out to me as folks that might be newer were um, XRSTF, uh, Jins-TKO uh, Moda, uh, Retired Wizard, Paul Cutler, um, Argov, I'm Not James, uh, THZ Inc. Uh, yep, those were the names, although I uh, notice here Hex that. I think I didn't boldify, but I don't recognize that name either. So that person may be new as well. So um, thank you to all of those folks. Thank you to all of our uh, authors, including the more frequent ones, but especially those folks who might be newer. It's always nice to see uh, new names popping into these lists from week to week. So uh, very cool stuff. Um, we had uh, seven reviewers this week. Um, those ones do look like the normal uh, suspects, so thank you to all of our uh, relatively usual reviewers. Um, there were 62 issues across all these projects uh, that were, uh, excuse me, 62 issues closed uh, by eight people and 24 issues opened by 13 people. Uh, so I think we had a couple initiatives this week on cleaning up some issues, and it definitely uh, is showing in the stats here. 
Uh, and then it mentions Hacktoberfest label removed, but uh, as noted in the prior weeks, we do that on the repos, and uh, we're over into November now, so Hacktoberfest is um, no longer as relevant. Uh, so with that, I will um, pass it over to Scott, if you are available to talk about the core. Totally, happy to. Thanks, Tim. <clears throat> okay, so for the core, we had eight pull requests merged from seven different authors. Uh, new name here is TH Zinc is new, I think. Um, hex that is a, a common uh, translator along with W tomorrow. So thank you to our translators. Uh, we had two reviewers as well, myself and Dan. Uh, we have 23 open pull requests, which is uh, comfortably under that 25 one page limit. Uh, we had eight closed issues by five people and seven open by six people. So we're net down one, which is awesome. Um, for a total of 672 open issues, uh, again, that number is down below 700, thanks to Dan uh, doing work last week. Uh, we use milestones to track urgency for eight different folks to work on uh, different issues. Uh, we have no open issues for 10.0. We have 14 open issues by 8.2x. And uh, we have 63 open issues for 9.0 and uh, two open issues for 9xx. So the, the highest priority ones are the 8.2x ones. Um, and then... Uh, the 9.0 as well. The 10.0 milestone is really just for us to remember to do uh, breaking API change stuff after, uh, you know, after 9.0 is stable and we're ready to start on 10. Uh, we have zero issues not assigned to milestone, so it looks like we're coming, uh, we're keeping up with triaging all of these as well. And that's it for the core. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, next up, we will talk about the libraries. These are all of the libraries over on GitHub. Those are going to uh, be inside of repositories named Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of the respective library. Uh, across all of those libraries this week, we had 66 pull requests merged, which is quite high. We had lots of folks working on some uh, Display.io uh, updates. Uh, so a sneak peek of a couple uh, hug reports there. Um, there were 10 authors for those 66 pull requests, which is also amazing. We usually don't see um, quite so many. So uh, thanks to all of our authors, including the folks I mentioned before, as well as some of our more usual contributors. Um, there were seven reviewers this week. So thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, there is a list of the merged pull requests here. The vast majority of pull requests this week were just one or two days uh, old. We did lots and lots of new ones with folks doing Display.io uh, API updates. Uh, so let me scroll past those to get to the next section here. Uh, that leaves us with 51 open pull requests, uh, the oldest of which is 445 days. The newest is just one day. Uh, over the past seven days, we had... 51 closed issues by three people, as well as 16 new issues uh, open by six people. Uh, that leaves us with 679 open issues, and of those, there are 19 that are currently labeled good first issue. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython, if you'd like to learn more and uh, help contribute to the project, um, the best way to get started with that is at circuitpython.org contributing. Um, you'll find a list of open pull requests and open issues there. Uh, if you are wanting to get involved, you can head over to the issues page and there's a drop down to filter on um, different tags and the good first issue tag is in that drop down. So you can find those 19 good first issues. Um, also would encourage you if you're interested in uh, getting involved to join us uh, here on the Discord throughout the week. Um, you can keep in touch with everyone who's working across different areas of the project. So. Um, all good stuff to get involved with. Um, so let's see, for uh, PyPy stats this week, uh, this is the, also covering the same libraries, but this is stats pulled out of PyPy, the Python packaging um, system. So we had, uh, across all these libraries, uh, 102,599 downloads across those 319 libraries. Um, there's a list of the top 10 here, so you can uh, check those out if you are interested. Um, there also is a list of libraries that have been updated in the last seven days, uh, which is a, uh, a relatively long list again this week. So um, you can check those out in the notes doc if you'd like. And then uh, let's see, next up is a section for Adafruit uh, Blinka. 
Um, I don't see Melissa in the chat, so I'll read the Blinka section. Let me just get to the right spot here. So uh, Adafruit Blinka, this is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, for CircuitPython to run on Raspberry Pi and other single board computers, uh, as well as a compatibility layer for MicroPython. Across those Blinka libraries this week, uh, we had no pull requests merged, uh, no authors, no reviewers. There are currently three open uh, pull requests. There are, uh, excuse me, there were uh, three closed issues by two people, uh, one open by one person, and that leaves the Blinka world with 77 uh, open issues. And for PyPy stats uh, on Blinka, there were uh, 13,766 downloads uh, and 8,779 PyWheels downloads. And Blinka is currently supporting 125 devices. Uh, so with that, I will take our next timestamp here and tell you about the hug reports. Uh, so next up will be hug reports. This is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list uh, as they appear in the notes doc uh, to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes when we get to uh, your turn in the list. So I will kick us off. Uh, uh, hug reports for me this week. Uh, big thanks to Paul Cutler and Retired Wizard, both of whom have submitted uh, lots and lots of fixes for Display.io uh, API updates across many libraries. So thank you uh, to those uh, two folks. And also thank you to Dan, who's done a lot of the reviews for those libraries. I uh, really appreciate all those folks helping out. Um, next up is hug reports for Dan H, uh, who's having some trouble with Discord this morning. So I'll read. Uh, Dan says, hug report for Retired Wizard uh, and Paul Cutler for doing PRs to update the libraries uh, to not use Display.io Show. Uh, and another hug report from Dan goes to 8880CC uh, uh, for a lot of ongoing FATFS investigation and doing fixes. Uh, next up is David Glauda, who's not present, so I'll read. David has a hug report for Dan H for helping uh, David with the 9.x transition. Uh, a hug report for, uh, for Paul and another one for me, Foamy Guy, for fixing many of the changes, uh, changes needed for Display.io uh, API change in 9.x. And another hug report uh, for David goes out to Maker Melissa for work on the S3 matrix portal and message board. Uh, next up is C. Grover, who's text only. C. Grover has got a hug report for Jepler for the superb gift of SynthIO that just keeps on giving. Uh, a hug report for me, Foamy Guy, for creating an excellent solution for Circup module dependencies and a group hug to the team and community. So thank you, C. Grover, for those hug reports. Uh, next up is DJ Devon, who's text only. DJ Devon has got a report to the CircuitPython developers for all new changes in 9.0. Uh, you've all put a lot of work into it. I'm excited to see where CircuitPython is headed. Uh, a hug report for me for uh, a neat deep dive on how to switch display projects to use 9.0 uh, root group syntax and finding some really neat legacy edge cases where show uh, is using its own custom display method and a post-Halloween group hug. Again, those were from DJ Devon. Uh, and then next up, we will hear from Katni. Thanks, Tim. So my first uh, hug is to two folks, Paul Cutler and Maker Melissa, for some great suggestions and information on my latest endeavors. Um, to you, Tim, for help with a piece of code from sometime in 2022. Um, I wrote a piece of code that allows me to uh, post um, to my blog and post that information to Mastodon at the same time. And uh, you wrote um, a large chunk of that code, uh, which I now need to adapt to do more. And it is uh, very clear and clean, and I'm very excited um, to start with that. So thank you very much for that. Um, congratulations to everybody on the 9.0 upgrades. I saw a lot of resolved closed issues going by, stuff that um, I either filed or commented on. And um, there were pretty major issues, and it looks like the IDF update is what uh, fixed them. But uh, it's excellent that you guys were able to get that going. Um, a group hug to all of the folks joining me in my new adventure, and a group hug to this community for continuing to be amazing. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, next up is Liz. 
Hello. Uh, so hug report to Discord user El Pekenin for suggesting the CircuitPython decimal library for the Mars Clock project I've been working on, and a hug report uh, related to Jeff for helping uh, for writing the CircuitPython decimal library and for giving me some feedback on how to better use the API, and a group hug. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Uh, next up is Scott. Hello, uh, Hug Reports, Dan, Foamy Guy, PR Cutler, and Retired Wizard for updating the libraries to root group, and also to my Adafruit coworkers for support and flexibility. All right, thank you, Scott. Next up is the uh, second of our two round robins. This is the status reports section. Uh, let me get to the right spot here. So status updates, this is our time to tell folks about uh, what we're up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list as it appears in the notes doc. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to during the next week until the next meeting. Um, so for my status updates uh, this week, I worked on um, circup dependencies for libraries that are in a bundle but not deployed to PyPy. Uh, and I submitted some uh, successful, well, I submitted a, a PR to the build tools and then a separate one to Circup, and I was able to get kind of a successful proof of concept um, reading from pyproject.toml uh, a list of Circup dependencies, which then uh, Circup will install with this new uh, modified version. So I learned a lot about the internals of uh, Circup while working on that. It was uh, very interesting for sure. Um, the uh, other kind of major thing that I've been working on uh, is the um, learn guide code updates for the display IO uh, changes in 9.x. So the same thing that was discussed for the libraries, but I've been in the learning guide uh, system repo rather than the libraries. Um, and I'm kind of closing in on it. I think I'm past the halfway point, but I don't know the exact count. So uh, getting closer, but still got some work to there to do there as well. Um, the, uh, the other thing I worked on was testing some new examples for the HTTP server. Um, there are new examples now that include the usage of the new template engine. So uh, I was checking those out this weekend, uh, late uh, belated hug report, let me say for Michael Pokusa for those. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I have in mind for the upcoming week is I uh, will be on deep dive uh, this Friday. So if folks are interested in hanging out, I'll be around Friday afternoon for that uh, or uh, evening, depending on where you're at. Um, next up is C. Grover, uh, who's text only, so I'll read. C. Grover says, uh, had a need to use Synth.io generated ADSR envelopes and LFO waveforms for a Eurorack project. Although CV-like input is supported by the Synth.io voc T2HZ function, CV output is achieved by tricking Synth.io.note to modulate. Uh, to modulate note amplitude with the envelope or LFO. Uh, although the result is workable, it rectifies the CV input since amplitude can only be positive value, uh, only a positive value. Uh, okay for an ADSR envelope, but problematic for an LFO sine wave. A discussion and recommendations are detailed in an, uh, an issue on the repo uh, on the, and this playground note. Uh, there's a link here in the notes doc if you'd like to check that out uh, over to Adafruit Playground. And then uh, the other item in Seagrover's status update this week says, uh, twice annual test of my automatic DST adjuster helper for real-time clocks was again successful. Nice. Uh, it was deployed over three years ago. Uh, let's see. Deployed over three years ago to four local and three remote clocks, but I continue to treat the change event as a code test. Looking forward to U.S. Congress finally eliminating the need for the helper and all of the testing. And there's a link here to that repo if anybody would like to set up your own automatically updating RTC. Uh, so thanks to Seagrover for that. Uh, next up is Dan H., uh, who I'll read. Dan says... Retested the LC709-203F, uh, which I think is battery sensor maybe, uh, on the ESP32-S3 with 9.0.0 uh, alpha 2. Uh, it's up. It's got the updated ESP IDF version 5.1. Uh, seems to work a lot better. The uh, BNO055, however, still does not work, uh, but it doesn't work on lots of microcontrollers. Um, next up, Dan says, opened issues for all libraries that use deprecated show from Display.io. Uh, Paul Cutler and Retired Wizard addressed all of these issues. I merged and created new releases. Uh, starting to look at 9.0 bugs. 
uh, made issues for updating libraries not to use uh, show. I think maybe this was duplicated. Yeah, these ones are done much more quickly than I expected by retired wizard Paul Cutler. Uh, they did the PRs and I reviewed these and made releases. And then uh, Dan's last item says, did more debugging on the Nina firmware, comparing Arduino and Adafruit versions, uh, and now understand which versions do and don't work, uh, which is awesome. Cool. Uh, Next up is David Glauda, uh, who's not present, so I'll read. David's got uh, two, uh, or i will say a couple, three high-level categories here. The first one's Teddy Ruxpin. So uh, David Glauda this week for Teddy Ruxpin, changing the eye color from blue to red. Uh, there's a link here to GitHub for some code that does that. Um, controlling the activation of Teddy Ruxpin with time-of-flight sensor and a Feather RP2040 with USB type A host and a bonus LED screen uh, to display distance and status. There's a link here to that as well for the gist. Um, went to show and tell to show the results. And then in CircuitPython news this week, David reports uh, testing upgrade to 9.0 alpha two on the Trinky RP2040 plus temperature sensor uh, with an I2C uh, display and a flight, uh, excuse me, and a fight with Circup, uh, MPY compatibility and display IO changes. Excuse me. Uh, testing QR code reading with a tiny sensor and the output uh, USB HID keyboard with the French uh, keyboard layout. It works fine with 8.x, but has a mysterious crash with 9.x. Um, so maybe an issue is in order for that one. Um, migrating my matrix display from Pimeroni board to the new S3 matrix portal, but I need to adapt the learn guide to my matrix resolution and size. There's a link here to the learn um, page for that. And then uh, non CircuitPython, so outside of the CircuitPython world, David reports uh, helping my son's girlfriend with Arduino thanks to a Metro 328 and some guides from Adafruit. Uh, not sure how I'm gonna go, not sure how I'm going to help her with uh, Visual Basic and access on her Mac. All right, thank you to David for those status updates. And uh, next up is DJ Devon3. DJ Devon3 says, uh, due to daylight savings time yesterday, I got tired of switching time zone uh, offset in settings.toml manually twice a year. Uh, Open Weather Map now has a feature they call geocoding that will automatically extract your time zone based off of your latitude and longitude. This feature wasn't present when I started coding my Feather weather script. Uh, updated it to, to, with the geocoding JSON call and it works great. Uh, if anyone out there is using Open Weather Map, look into automating your local time now using latitude longitude and never have to worry about the time zone offset again, which definitely sounds good to me. Uh, for Halloween, uh, DJ Devon got a cyberpunk looking helmet that incorporates a 16 by 32 flexible. Uh, four millimeter pitch LED matrix that smoothly wraps around the inside of a helmet visor. Requires a shady Chinese uh, mobile app that I'm not a fan of. This week I'll be working on piping it to an itsy bitsy blue fruit to get it running on CircuitPython. If successful, I, uh, if successful, I will detail it in playground notes. Uh, and then uh, lastly, DJ Devon says, helped a few people on Discord get their projects working. Hearing people get excited when they get an LED to turn on never gets old. Uh, totally agreed there. It's always nice uh, when folks get their stuff working. Um, next up is ADCC, who's text only, so I'll read. Uh, ADCC says, debugging mostly. Uh, open OCD and the Pico Pro ate up most of my time. No complaints. Uh, a journey well worth taking. So thank you for that, ADCC. Uh, next up is Katni. Hello. So after two months of nonstop work, I'm incredibly excited to share that I reached an important milestone in my latest adventure. Uh, it took much longer than I expected, though, in hindsight, as always, it seems like maybe I should have expected that. I'm still not entirely ready, but realizing completely that I never will be. Um, this needed to happen, so I went with it. Uh, you can check out the details on my website, katni.com. Um, and uh, I wrote a post up there. Um, I spent the better part of the last three days writing up the first project I'll be covering. The text is basically done, uh, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to handle images. I use a Python-based static site generator, which can do images natively, but I suspect it won't scale well. Um, so I'm trying to mitigate that from the start instead of needing to go back through everything. It was suggested to host the images on PixelFed and embed from there, uh, which I haven't looked into yet, but sounds like it's a good idea. 
However, if anyone has any other suggestions, I'm interested to learn about other options regardless of whether I use them. Um, so if anybody's uh, using some sort of um, photo service or, or that sort of thing uh, to host photos uh, for their personal sites, please uh, reach out to me and let me know what you're doing. Um, I have no intention of ever switching to WordPress, so <laughs> uh, I can't speak to that. Um, but uh, any other help would be uh, super appreciated. That's what I've got. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up is Liz. Hello. Uh, so in continuing to work on the, my Mars clock project, I hit the float limits of CircuitPython, which I'd never experienced before. Uh, I went to the Help with CircuitPython channel, and luckily a Discord user, Elpa Kennan, pointed me in the direction of Jepler's CircuitPython decimal library, and then using that library allowed for an accurate Mars Sol date calculation, and as a result, accurate Mars time, which was 100% on point with the official Mars 24 NASA clock. Uh, so I wrote up a Adafruit Playground post about this, uh, talking about the process, and I'll include it as a footnote in the upcoming Learn Guide so folks will see why that library is necessary for an accurate uh, calculation. Uh, and then for a personal project, I just received uh, some PCBs from Osh Park in my mailbox a couple minutes ago. Uh, so I'm going to be building a patch bay for the Arteria Keystep Pro MIDI controller. Uh, for those who don't know, in the back, uh, it has a lot of outputs for CV, so 1V Oct and Gates. Um, but what's a little tricky is since they're all in the back, it makes for patching like you normally would with Eurorack a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this kind of patch bay with carrier PCBs come up um, to the top of my Euro rack uh, setup so then I can patch a little bit more naturally. And uh, that's my status update. Nice. Thank you, Liz. Uh, next up, I will send it over to Scott. Thanks, Tim. Uh, okay, so I'm around all day today, but tomorrow we'll be off and on. Uh, my mom is in the hospital and should be getting a diagnosis this week. Uh, I had a biopsy on Friday, so I was there Thursday, Friday. Um, and we'll know more this week, and that will inform kind of what our schedule is in the longer term. Uh, I'm circling back to the split heat PR to get it finished up. I just looked and I only failed pre-commit, so I just pushed a fix for that. Um, after that, I'll be bug hunting. Um, Lamore just poked me about an SD card issue on 9.0, so I'll probably take a look at that. I'm scheduled to be out on Friday and Monday to go to San Diego, but that does depend on uh, what happens with my mom's health over the week. So that's what I was uh, alluding to with the, the flexibility in the, in the sport. So uh, that's what's going on with me. And uh, thank you, Tim, for uh, covering Deep Dive last week and this week. I really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Uh, all, all of us uh, wishing the best for you and your, your family, for sure. Um, Thanks. And then that is it for status updates. Uh, so let us talk about the weeds for just a moment. Uh, this would be the time for In the Weeds. However, uh, I see down at the bottom of the notes stock, we don't have any topics. Um, so I think we will skip past In the Weeds and head on to the wrap up. So this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for, let me do take a timestamp though before I go, uh, the CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 6th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, again, if you'd like to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It'll also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, you can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that, and you should definitely do so. Uh, the next meeting will be held at the usual time, I believe, next Monday the uh, 13th, that is, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, the meeting, of course, as it is every week, is held here on the Adafruit Discord. You can join that at adafru.it slash discord. If you'd like to be notified of changes uh, to the time or date of the upcoming meetings, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. Uh, and that is all for now. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks.